old people. <laughs> I just made a whole, um, gave a whole rant about how this morning I woke up and the first thing I saw was the Rick Ross response to the beef and then I finally played back the beef and I was like, oh, okay, I'm up to date. But then I was looking for the Iranian strike on Israel and I couldn't find it. It came up. I, eventually I understood what um, happened with the Iranian strike on Israel and whether it really sparked, you know, a, a regional or world dispute. <clears throat> so I got that and that was kind of important since it could spark a world war and it should be in the top of the news. But still, the most important thing in the news is the beef. And I was saying that I walked Biggie to his car the day he was killed. And that experience was, I got home and I got a phone call from Mike Concepcion. and I was in LA, we went to that party that you've all read about. I walked him to his car. The only time I ever really hung out with him, hung out. And I dropped, I walked into his car, I went home and Mike Concepcion called me and told me he had been killed. The next day we had a meeting at Mr. Farrakhan's house. Not the next day, the next day I called and we set up a meeting and we had a meeting where East and West came together at Mr. Farrakhan's house and that kind of stopped the war. It's all documented. But it was a big deal because people were dying, right? And you know, Biggie and Tupac were dead. And rap beef escalated to that. Um, a lot of other people died too, they're just not as famous. So here we are today, and there's rap beef, and it's the biggest thing in the news. But I want to just say how powerful they are, the rappers. They're so powerful that they came together and they said we wanted equal high quality education. The American government would figure out a way to do it. They all went to Trump tomorrow and said we want you to figure out how to pay for equal high quality education for every American. It would be part of his campaign and we could probably push him to do it. The same for sure with Joe Biden, he's more likely to try. I mean, it would be as big as APAC. I don't know, we could push him to do something so meaningful about healthcare, about education, about all of the things that matter to black people. Just rappers alone could spark the dialogue big enough and create a dialogue big enough and a demand big enough that our American government would deliver for us equal high quality education, or, or healthcare that's equivalent to the healthcare of every other developed country in this world. But instead, we are, are beefing. <clears throat> I'm all for entertainment, but it's not their fault that they're bigger than our congressmen, that they're more important than our senators, and that their words carry more weight than our leadership. I remember Malcolm X said that it was a shame that we lived in a world where entertainers and only black people had entertainers as leaders. Well, that was designed to be such a, you know, so when Farrakhan put those entertainers in a room, when I had that summit and all of the rappers came, every New York City candidate for mayor came, every, the head of the NAACP, Kwasi and Fume, the head of the Urban League, uh, all of the councilmen and who were interested in that group, supporting them, they all showed up. And he told them they weren't gangsters, but that the government, in fact, was gangster. And they should <laughs> curb their words. And a lot of them really took that to heart and did something. And we did do things. Again, we changed the Rockefeller drug laws. We got thousands of people out of jail. We got hundreds of millions of dollars put in the education. But we did something. The Hip Hop Summit was successful. Not in the way we would hope, but certainly today. Where is the communication amongst rappers that has to do with lifting our people? Not their job. They didn't ask for this power. They asked for power over people to buy their records and power over people to love them as music artists and poets. But unfortunately, we need them to say something else together. It would spark a revolution. And I just wanted to get that out. I said it and I erased it on this tape. But I'm saying it again. I said I walked Biggie to his car and I felt that night his death. I felt the, I, I must have been involved in saving the lives of God knows how many rappers I solved so many rap beef behind the scenes. I saw that. <clears throat> it was not nearly as, as, as big, the beefs. Even though they were in the cover of Vibe magazine, they weren't as traveled as we are today with social media. 
enough so that we smother the potential for world war. We all should have been sitting on our, not worried so much because life is about moving forward, but we should be aware of the things like the attack from Iran to Israel. Could spark a world war, and we should know about that more than we should the lyrics of Drake's diss. Just my opinion, and I hope that someone listens and some young is the NAACP still, I don't know, but Kwasi and Fume was the head of the NAACP. He sat in the front row when Farrakhan addressed rappers. Whether you like Farrakhan or not, all of the mayoral candidates, five, two Jewish ones, Bloomberg and others, came to that summit just to pay homage to the power of hip hop. And then hip hop did exude some power, like I said, and changed some things. And they still have the power. In fact, their power is so pop, so mainstream, that they can do much more than they were able to do before. And I hope that someone, Birdman, you know, one of the older statesmen who is still very involved, Jay-Z and Rock Nation, um, so many powerful hip-hop figures who are still in the game and still have relationship with, across the board with hip-hop, those people could really if they want to create something, a vehicle where the power of hip hop is harnessed and used in the way we tried to use it years ago. Don't let it get away. It's really, really useful to the black community because we need voices that will spur more voices that will create the revolutions to save us from, God knows they're tearing apart whatever we built any affirmative action, any of the things that we fought for are being taken from us. Hip hop could protect us, and could also create new vehicles for the betterment of humanity. That's it. What about the Hip Hop Caucus? Uh, I haven't been in touch with them, the Reverend who ran it, but he's not moving Drake. It's just, when we had Jay-Z and Puffy and whoever else, what there was, there were so many Eminem people all showed up. Everybody showed up to see Farrakhan. And it was scary. The mainstream media was afraid. Well, they, well, they carried it. But, the, but his ability to push people, if he would decide to speak about the factory farming industry, if the, if the collective hip-hop spoke about the poisoning of our communities, they'd bear out on, you know, on, the, on the questions that matter. <laughs> Why does, and I, I thought about this one, why does McDonald's have 19 ingredients in the American French fry and three, oil, salt, and potato in the British one? Because the American government allows for such foolery to go on. Hip hop could change the food we eat. Hip hop could change the level of education we get. Hip hop could change the level of healthcare we get. They can't do it alone, they can do it because they can create such a revolution amongst people that politicians would have no choice but to listen. I don't know who the leader is, who will step up, and who has the power to do, um, to, to organize them, but it would take a lot of, not so much work, I guess. Just get one star who has the voice, J. Cole, maybe. Somebody. All right, namaste, yogis, that's it. I was given this um, sound bowl. That particular bowl makes the sound that vibrates in the heart chakra, the Anahata chakra. So I use it every morning. I sit here and friends come and meditate with me. And then when we come out of meditation, I use that sound bowl. It's supposed to stimulate the heart chakra. So today, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about it just was on my heart to talk a little bit about the blame game. And the, 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 our society, the state of our society, and I think that social media has contributed 
to what I sometimes refer to as the victim Olympics. People are accusing each other and attacking each other. And a lot of it is to do with being heard. That we are suffering because we want to be heard. And Instagram has made us thirst for the camera. And sometimes it's part of your branding and building of a project or your image so you can build something. And sometimes it's just because we're hurting. So we lash out at other people or we create. Some people have even created a situation where they claim to have been assaulted. Uh, and then you find out they made it up to become more popular or more of a subject of discussion. And you see that a lot. At the same time, rappers are fighting instead of working together for the betterment of our community. And there was a moment, there were times when we were able to, as in the hip hop community, work together to build coalitions that changed our society. I always talk about that one proud moment when we changed the laws and got tens of thousands of people out of jail. When Jay-Z and 50 Cent and the Beastie Boys and Run DMC and Public Enemy and Ja Rule and so many came together, everybody all the way back to the Beastie Boys, did I say them? And, and Wu-Tang Clan and everyone came together and created a rally that created awareness that led to the negotiation that changed the law. The law. And that was hip hop working together. At the same time, there was always beef. But I don't see any positive movements that are being ushered in by the collective of hip hop. And I also pointed out the other day that lots of times these beefs don't end well. And we've seen so many young people die. If you look on Instagram over the last year or so, we forget, we, we think it's only Tupac and Biggie. No, it's everyone uh, in every community that's up in arms over something said by one rapper about another. I shouldn't say everyone, but large numbers of people and large groups of people have been attacking each other in defense of their local rapper. The drill rapping, we're talking about, I'm gonna murder you next, and they actually do or just the rappers from all over the country who have been murdered over the last few months. It's because of uh, words that we don't need to share that create this negative uh, climate where people die. Usually the rappers don't do the killing, but their friends do. I remember when people wanted to defend me, I said, please don't help me, I'll fix it. When I guess it was Suge Knight was after me we don't want to uh, encourage this beef. So I see some of the elders in hip hop saying, oh, well, J. Cole shouldn't have apologized. Well, he just opted out of all of it. And I applaud him for it. This is not really pro wrestling. Rick Rubin used to say, oh, rap beef is like pro wrestling. Bragging over the other rapper, like, I'm better is one thing, but then talking about how poor someone is how cheap their car is, how their girl is running off with another guy, and then the next thing you know, it spirals into, you a bitch ass nigga, and when I see you, I'm gonna kill you. A lot of that is the next step as it keeps escalating. So I want people to mind their words today. This is not for everyone, this is for the few who are listening. Speak, you know, Jesus had a pocket full of passes. He didn't judge anyone. He left God for judgment. Jesus was a person who forgave everyone. And he was on earth and made in God's image, as we say, and he is like us. We want to be like Jesus, not like God. It's not for us to judge. And the way we're attacking each other, and again, I'm not saying as an old person, oh, we used to be great and now you're bad. I'm saying, this is just the nature of humanity, that we have these groups, more or less, attacking each other. And as individuals, 
we can be different. We can try not to judge. We can try not to attack. We can try to remember the truth and not reimagine stories that create a judgment from others about a person. People are always crying on Instagram because 10 or 12 people attacked them. I hope they remember it's not 300 million people, but it's just a few people who have nothing else to do but attack. Try to keep your head up and your words uplifting and try to have a beautiful existence where you sit in life like it's a movie and you blissfully see it all and play your role. Just get your popcorn, be good, do good. Those words are funny, good, right? Do good, be good, and go out into the world and contribute good. And remember that good givers are great getters. This is only for the few who are listening. Um, people can say, why, none of your business. It's not. I want to try to stay out of the mud if I can. But at the same time, people do say your words encourage me. And so if I'm a good servant of God, then I give the best I have, the best ideas that I come up with after meditation. And now the people are here to meditate with me. Good morning. And so I'm going to meditate and play with my sound bowl. If you watch the beginning, you see. I'm better, right? Much better. I'm much better at it. <laughs> it's given to me by a holy being. And again, this, this particular sound is for the heart chakra. The heart chakra is the fourth chakra. It's the Manipura. It's the Mulandara, the Swasistana, the Manipura, the Anahata, the heart chakra. The Anahata. And that chakra is when you begin at the root, and at the root, you take care of yourself and people close to you, and it keeps going up. And the heart chakra is when you really start to give to others. And then the Sahasara chakra, where you're only a servant to God and others but you must take care of the heart chakra, and you certainly must take care of the Mulandara chakra, the first, take care of yourself so you can serve God. Anyway, <clears throat> that's the end of my rambling for the day. God bless you all, have a beautiful day.